All right, guys, today we have the 2023 Trick or Trade Booster Bundle. So first thing we, do, we need to know is that this is different from the 2022. And you can tell here the biggest difference is the color. Now, they did change the package a little bit. This one was just simply a, a bag full of booster boxes. And then this, we'll open it in a second, actually has a cardboard tray in here. And so the packs are protected a little bit more because I believe they were probably getting banged up in here. So orange is 2022, green is 2023. Let's see what's going on in here. So I'm really excited to see these again. This is a re really cool product from the Pokemon company because it's helping spread Pokemon cards to kids, which is pretty awesome. So there's our package. This is a better setup for sure. These, they, they've stayed intact. Uh, another thing to note is we actually get 50 packs in the green one and 40 in the orange. So they bumped it up by 10. The price also went up a little bit, so look out for that. Now, the reason I keep pointing out the green and orange um, difference so prominently is because these packs pretty much look identical. You can see the difference here when they're side by side, but yeah, I couldn't really tell, to be honest. I couldn't remember what was on last year's pack. So when I saw this, I was like, uh, what, what's going on exactly? But we definitely had a, a Gengar theme going on last year. And we have Mimikyu this year. And of course, Pikachu just slapped across every Pokemon product. So let's see what's going on here with these 2023 packs. Okay, so same as last year, we got the single booster pack with three cards in it. And again, same as last year, we have a 30 card set to complete. So I believe it was 22 packs it took me to complete the set last year. And again, these cards are nothing special. This product is meant for kids, and so I think they avoided putting any big cards in here so people like me wouldn't buy up all the cards. So right off the bat, we got a Dusk Skull, Marshadow, that's our Hollow, and we have a Miss Magius. Now, I was watching some other YouTubers here, and I noticed we got the sword and shield cards mixed with scarlet and violet and that's why why we have the two different card borders and i really didn't think they were going to do this i thought we were just going to stick to sword and shield for this product so i'm excited to see some updated cards in here now these are reprints just like last year's set and i'm sure any uh, upcoming years these are just going to be reprints the interesting thing is that we didn't get our own well, the cards didn't get their own set number, so it is a straight reprint with a stamp, stamp on top. So I found that interesting. There's no actual order to this set list because they aren't numbered, so you pretty much have to pull the cards out until you have 30 separate cards, and then you can go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to be putting mine in a binder. I'll just put them in whatever order I want. So let's open one more just for fun. And then I will let you guys know what it took me to complete the set. And maybe I'll take this moment to say that if you do want to buy this product and complete the set, you're going to have a lot of packs left over. Consider actually handing them out to trick or treaters. That's what this product is for. And that's probably just a really good thing to do. All right. Interesting. So we got all psychics here. I believe there are, there are some dark types and we got a Pikachu in here as well. These are spooky Pokemon. It's Halloween themed. And again, nothing crazy. I think the most expensive card in this set is Mimikyu and it's selling for a whopping 99 cents on TCG Play right now. So is this worth the purchase? Eh, it's up to you. Personally, I'm gonna be able to complete this set and hopefully have about half of these left over which I will do something with. I don't get trick-or-treaters where I where I am, so maybe I'll donate them or something similar to that. Okay, interesting. So it looks like if we get a hollow from the Scarlet and Violet era, we're actually going to get the hollow borders, just like they are with Scarlet and Violet cards. And if we get a hollow from the Sword and Shield, it's that version of a hollow. So again, straight across reprints, Nothing really too special going on with these. It's 
kind of odd that we get the two different style of cards in one product. I don't really like that, personal preference, but it is what it is. Now, another question that we get a lot on Sleeve No Card Behind is, should you invest in this product? Is this something that's worth purchasing and just sticking away in a closet in hopes that it will appreciate over time? Well, I think the short answer is no. I don't think, hey, there's our first uh, fire type here. That's pretty cool. We got a, a dark type over here. So we're starting to uh, get some variety. Yeah, I don't think this is really investable. For example, I'm still seeing these on the store shelf right next to the 2023 packs. That means we have a large supply and low demand. This was kind of hard to find when it originally came out. And I think that's because it was the very first release for the Trick or Trade boosters. Now with the 2023 set coming out, it's not that much of a surprise anymore. People understand that there aren't any valuable chase cards and they're just sitting on the shelves, not too hard to get a hold of. So I think that would indicate that this isn't investable. And you could make the argument that maybe Maybe five years from now, they'll sell for a little more. I'm thinking more like 10 to 15. And uh, oh, there's our Pikachu. Wow, that is actually a really nice card. I'm really liking the hollow there and the artwork is really good. Even our stamp is foil there, which is a neat touch. I really like this, uh, this very simple hollow pattern they got going on. So usually Pikachu is the most valuable, but like I said, I believe it's Mimikyu in this case. Personally, I don't want one of these sitting around in my closet for 20 years until it goes up in value slightly. That's my personal opinion. If you guys want to purchase this and hold on to it, go ahead. But this product is meant for kids and it's going to be best to hand it out to kids on Halloween. Okay, so I've opened the packs and completed the set. This year it took me... 32 packs to complete the set. Last year was 22 packs. So this was really interesting. I didn't want to open up an extra 10 packs, but it were it was two cards I was missing and they were hiding in one pack. And I'll circle back to that in a moment. This is how much bulk I have left over, which is quite a lot. I probably had 90% of this set completed by maybe the 22nd or 24th pack. So I'm going to figure out something to do with this bulk, but in the meantime, let's check out the set. This is last year's, just to be clear. So we got a lightning type, a fighting grass, fire, dark type, and the rest is psychic. And that is the same this year as well. There are a lot of repeated cards in here. So last year we had Phantom, Trevenant, we have Litwick, Lampin, Chandelure. We see them again, Pikachu we see again. So let's skip ahead here. This year's set, 2023, starts on this Pikachu. These two fighting type were the two missing cards that I had to chase for a long time, which actually explains why this Lycanroc here, even though it's a non-hollow, is actually worth almost more than anything else in this set on TCG play right now. So I'm guessing this guy has a really low pull rate for whatever reason. So if you pull this one, I guess you're lucky. If not, you might be chasing it. But here we got Phantom, Trevenant, sorry, Phantom and Trevenant again. We've got these three guys again. The Ghastly Haunter Gengar evolution is a lot of fun. We see a lot of repeated cards. Interestingly, we have Miss Magius without Mistrevis. So I thought that was a little awkward. I don't like putting it there without its pre-evolution. Uh, noteworthy cards here. The Mimikyu is very nice. The Houndoom is very nice. Otherwise, I, I know I've said it already, but it's a very simple set meant for kids. If you're going to do what I do, where you just put them in a binder and leave them there for your own obsession, that's great. You're going to have a lot of bulk left over, and I do have 18 packs left over, so I'm going to figure out something good to do with that stuff because I don't really have room to just shove it in the in the closet because it's already full of Pokemon cards. So thank you guys for watching the video. If you want to put this together, just use the list that I found on SleeveNoCardBehind.com. It makes it really easy because, like I said, they don't actually have set numbers at the bottom. So you don't know 
when you have all 30, unless you have them laid out on the floor and you can actually see 30 of them. So check out the list at Sleeve No Card Behind. And thank you so much for watching the video.